Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at pouring some wine from this wine bottle into this wine glass. This is the second part of our video, and in the first part we looked at creating the wine and having it settle into our wine bottle and start to pour out. So you can see here we have a good setup for that wine pouring out. And now what we need to do is create a simulator for that wine glass to fill up with wine. Now to do this we're going to create a separate simulator and we're going to pass the liquid from one simulator to the next. The benefit of this is of course we get a little bit more control and the ability to uh, iterate our workflow uh, as well as if we had a really large simulator to do all of this work it may take a lot of time to simulate and uh, that might become cumbersome. So the first thing I'm going to do is on the bottle simulator go over to the modify panel and down in preview we're going to choose to uncheck only if selected and that's going to actually show us our liquid at all times so that when we have the other simulator selected we can actually see it. The other thing I'm going to do is just do a little detail reduction for the viewport and that's going to speed up our viewport scrubbing if we do need to see this all the time. So next we're going to set up our simulator for the glass. Let's hop into our top view go to Create Geometry, Phoenix FD, and create a simulator that goes around the top of our glass. We'll go into the front view, under the Modify panel. Let's set the grid size to be about 17 by 17 by 17, and move it into place. We'll just move that up. Now when positioning this, it's going to be important that we kind of understand what we're going to be doing with this simulator. So we're going to take the liquid that's coming out of this bottle and pour it in uh, there. So we don't want to start simulating liquid off of this liquid coming out of the bottle up here in the spout. We probably want to start kind of simulating that as it starts to pour in here. So we'll drag it down a bit. Look in the top view and just make sure this, this is kind of aligned. And under our cell size, let's set this a little bit closer to the cell size of the bottle. You ideally want them to match, but as we're kind of building up the simulation for the glass, we'll work at a slightly lower resolution. So I'm going to set the cell size to 4. And that'll give us some pretty good feedback as we're doing test simulations. Next thing I'm going to do is go into the preview and I'm going to set the preview uh, for this. Uh, actually, before I do that, we'll turn on liquids and uh, just enable it. Uh, we don't want any viscosity here. And then we'll go back to preview. Uh, we'll set the liquid temperature to the 1.5 that we've been using. And we're going to set the color to something slightly different. So let's set it to just this uh, bright green. That way we'll be able to distinguish the liquid that's pouring in and the liquid we're generating from it. Next, we're going to create our liquid source. So let's go to Create Helpers, choose Phoenix FD, and we're going to choose our Phoenix Liquid Source here. Now for this source, we're going to want to uh, actually generate this liquid um, instead of from a proxy object or something uh, like that from the other liquid that's pouring in. So we want to check Can Pick Phoenix and choose Add and then choose the other Phoenix simulator. It'll pop up and we'll pick this event and choose OK. That way we're generating the liquid from these voxels coming in. We're going to increase the discharge a little bit to 100 and at the bottom make sure that we choose to check velocity because that's going to be important to take into account the velocity that's coming in. And That should be all for this source. We'll just go ahead and name this glass source. Now back to our simulator, what we're going to do is, uh, as we did with the bottle, go to the interaction section. And instead of using an exclude list, we're going to use the include list and include the things that we need. So let's add our glass, of course. Uh, let's add the source. And last but not least, we're going to add the other simulator that's pouring into it. So we'll pick that and choose that again. And those will be all the things that we want to include in this simulation. Now we should be good to start. So let's go up to simulate. 
and we're not really going to need to simulate you know between zero and when this liquid starts pouring in so probably starting maybe around 83 will be a good idea so let's set the start frame to 83 we'll set the end frame to 280 because it should have probably settled by then and we'll click on start now here we see the liquid start kind of pouring in and it's going to be uh, cascading down the walls and we have a couple of issues kind of going on here first we're getting a lot of um, liquid that's getting simulated from actually the entire simulation or the entire simulator object and that's not really what we want um, so let's just pause this or stop it and in order to prevent this you can see that we're actually getting uh, a lot more um, all over the surface of that liquid and, and we don't really want that uh, what we're going to do is select the bottle and go to Phoenix FD properties we're going to want to check solid object so that this is not a solid object anymore and that'll make sure that it really just creates the liquid from these voxels that are coming in let's select the glass and click start and we'll try that again So now we can see that the liquid getting generated from the liquid pouring in is in much better shape. Um, it's just using these voxels here, which is really great. But uh, we're certainly pouring through the side, which is uh, something we've been used to before. So click on Stop. And this is going to be the problem that we ran into before, which is uh, the cell wall here is pretty thin. We can fix this in a couple of different ways. We could use that push modifier or we could uh, decrease the cell size. For the ability to kind of keep this interactive for the moment, let's go and add our push modifier. And let's set that to maybe a 0.3. We'll have a pretty thick wall, but it'll give us an idea of what's going on. With that set up, we'll click Start again and simulate through. We'll probably stop the simulation right here because we've gotten what we need out of the glass. And when we scrub through, we can see that the liquid pours in, kind of splashes around a bit, fills up, and starts to settle into place. Now there's a couple things that we want to edit about this. I think first what we'll do is go ahead and adjust the cell size as well as some of the dynamics. So let's go and go into dynamics. And in here, we're going to make a couple of different adjustments. So I'm going to uncheck this for the vorticity. We still want a little bit of vorticity, but this seems to tumble around a little bit more. Under conservation, instead of symmetric, we're going to choose smooth so that we can get a nice smooth wine-like liquid filling up the glass. And lastly, uh, on the bottle, under material transfer, if you remember, we chose forward transfer. We're going to keep this at classic because that's going to allow the liquid to settle a little bit better liquids that are moving rather fast and flowing it's probably a good idea to use the forward transfer another reason for that is as it goes uh, flows out and then comes back in if we didn't have that forward transfer we may actually gain some volume here so uh, we were dealing with not wanting to lose volume earlier and if it uh, does a lot of has a lot of movement and then kind of splashes back if we don't have forward transfer we might get that gain in volume which we don't want for the glass, all this is just settling into place, so the classic method is going to be good. We may increase the steps per frame, though, so that we get a little better quality out of that. Now we're going to go up to the grid and just set that cell size back down to a uh, 2.5 to kind of match the fluid that's coming in. We'll also, when doing that, probably be able to bring this push down quite a bit. So uh, we may want to keep it a little bit, uh, but I'll set that maybe to a 0.1 and that'll give me a little bit of a wall there but still look like an okay glass actually maybe even a 0 0.05 uh, will be fine so now we can go and click on that scroll up to simulation and click on start now that we've simulated with the higher resolution grid you can see that we have our nice liquid pouring in here uh, so it comes it hits the wall we get some nice curvature uh, swishing around in the glass 
and it settles into place nicely. Last thing that we need to do is set up uh, some of our rendering parameters. Now in particular for this bottle because we created our liquid based on uh, this volume object we we'll want to go in and create a rendering gizmo for this. So I'm going to click on this and we can actually just use the bottle itself. So if I go down into rendering we'll set a couple of properties here. We want to, if we're using V-Ray, choose implicit surface and we're going to check gizmo right here and choose the bottle. What that's going to mean is if we have any interpenetration between the wall and these voxels it's going to kind of cut them off and smooth them out so that we don't have any artifacts in the rendering for refraction. We probably don't need to do that with the glass because these are all going to uh, hit the wall and slide down and have a good contact with the glass. We will want to go and select it and go into the rendering section and set it to implicit surface. This is going to give us a good surface especially when we're transferring from one liquid to another and that's probably going to be pretty important. Now we can go and set up a few materials. If I go into the material editor you'll see that we already have a couple that should be assigned. So for the wine bottle we have a nice V-Ray material that has a little bit of a fog color and some refraction for our glass. We have more of a pure glass setup, so we have some pretty high refraction set up there, uh, no particular fog color. And for the liquid, which is going to actually be applied to both of these simulators, right now it's just a gray shader. We're going to choose this wine color, uh, so we have this wine material, and that's going to have a little bit of a red exit color there. So we'll apply that there, and we'll also select this simulator and we'll apply that there. One other thing we'll need to do is with this bottle simulator selected go over to the rendering area and set invert gizmo. That'll make sure that the uh, outside of this bottle is actually omitted as opposed to the inside and that'll give us our liquid. Now we can go to render And you can see we have the start of a nice render of some uh, red wine pouring into a glass and filling up, coming out of the bottle, and we see some of those uh, eddies and waves in there, which is great. I'll just stop this, and what I might do is pop in, we'll get a slightly different angle on this, maybe down here, and go in and choose our progressive rendering settings. I'll just set that to progressive and you can see the wine come up and working with the progressive sampler in V-Ray 3 so you can really easily get uh, some nice feedback here in uh, different frames and different areas get a little quick look at different angles and different frames here we are at the kind of initial pour here so we get some of that splashing and curling Let we go check it out at that frame. So that's how we set up a bottle of wine pouring into a wine glass with Phoenix FD. We looked at some of the options in order to work in a more iterative fashion in order to preview your results and uh, some of the things that you might run into in a little bit more of a production environment and how to achieve the goals that you're looking for uh, with a liquid pouring type situation. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.